let me show you a proof of concept of how we can use a back-end system to include user information into a prompt that goes to chat GPT or the GPT 3.5 large language model. So what we have is a database that contains records about two users. In this situation, the database is an SQL database. It could be information that would be provided via an API or in an Excel spreadsheet or in a JSON file. But in this example, we decided to go with a scalable system, so we went with SQL. And so we have two records, Jane and John, and we're storing information about them, just some very basic information, a user ID number, a user name, the product that they're using, their level of ability, and the operating system that they're using. So in this case, the product information isn't really used, but in another situation, you might have users that are on a light version of a program and a professional or enterprise version of the program with different functionality. So by having that in there, you could identify them and the information may adapt to reflect the capabilities in that situation. And so we have ability. One user, Jane, is advanced. John is a beginner. And on operating system, Jane is using the Mac and John is using Windows. So a very simple, short database. And with the help of ChatGPT, we developed a Python application to take that information from that database and inject it into a prompt. And this program is called app.py. In this program, it uses some Python libraries. It uses Flask, SQLite 3, OpenAI, Logging, and OS. And to run this Python application, you would need to install those. OK, so let's run that program. That's our database, user profiles. And our personalized chatbot is in this folder here. There is the app.py. So what I can do is I can open a new terminal at folder and I type python3 app.py. And that starts running the application. What the application does is it runs a web page on 127.001 port 5000. And this is the chatbot interface where somebody would enter their details. So in this situation, we'll pretend we're Jane and we'll ask what shortcuts are there for saving my, I'll put in Audacity. Now, in a real world situation, we, for data protection or personal identify information, we might not want to include Jane in the prompt, but let's show you what the result is. So we send, hit the submit button, and that goes off to chat GPT. Goes off, and that goes off to GPT 3.5. So in the response, what we have included is what prompt was sent. So we can see that. And then what we see is the answer. So the prompt that was sent was amended from what Jane wrote. So it said, my name is Jane. The operating system I use is Mac. I have advanced level skills in using Audacity. My question is, and then Jane's question. And then added to that, instructions provide detailed information on the topic and cite any relevant sources if available. So the answer that ChatGPT gives to save your Audacity project files on a Mac, it says you use Command S. Now, this could be developed so the formatting and presentation is better than this just wall of text here. Let's go back and let's pretend we're John. And let's ask the same question.
And this time what it said is to save you use the control key and the letter S because that's how you do it in Windows, which is different from how you do it in Mac. So it is personalizing the responses. To take this further, uh, you can do further developments. At the moment, what this does is it's asking the question to GPT 3.5 and the information that that large language model has about Audacity. To take it further, what we could do is integrate this with a RAG system, a retrieval augmented generation system, so that it only uses the information that's stored in a knowledge base to provide the answers, and that would minimize hallucination and make the answer more relevant to your particular situation. And we have plans to develop a proof of concept that does that as well. And this is something that we cover in our e-learning course on using generative AI in technical writing.